I have the solutions for this lab right here and some pipettes. I have the 110 phenanthrolene and the iron 2 sulfate. And you can see that they're both colorless solutions. I'm going to put on some gloves, condition the pipettes, and then pipette the solutions according to the table in your lab procedures. I pipetted out the solutions according to the table in your procedures, and you can see that it's no longer clear solutions. We have a reddish orange solution here. And they all have different degrees of that reddish orange color. So going from left to right, I have test tubes one through eight in the front, and you can see they're going from lighter to darker. I pulled out test tube 12 here, and you can see that it's light. It's like test tube two. So it goes lighter to darker and then gets lighter again, and we'll see this in the absorbance values. Now in order to get a value for the lambda max, the peak absorbance, I use test tube four here because it has a nice reddish color, red-orange color, and I pop that in the spectrophotometer and I hit collect, and so we can see a peak here. And what we want to do is find the peak absorbance and what wavelength that absorbance is at. So I'm looking at the data on the left side of the screen and I'm scrolling down looking for the largest absorbance value. So I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, and looking at the right column there that gives me the absorbance value. And I see that the biggest absorbance value is at 512 nanometers. So at 512 nanometers, the absorbance is 0.488. So for 2, 4, at 512 nanometers, the absorbance is 0.488. So you're going to want to make sure you write this data down in your data table. 2,4 has an absorbance of 0.488, and that's at 512 nanometers. So in the next clip, I'm going to show you collecting data for the other tubes. I'm starting with the lightest color tube and working my way to the darkest color tube. So I'll start with tube 1, which is light, and then remember that tube 12 was also very light. So I won't go in numerical order. And the next clip is going to show this process sped up. And then at the end, I will show you all the data that you're going to want to write down in your data table. So here is all the data for each tube. So you're going to want to record the absorbance for each tube. And again, this data was all taken at the same lambda max, which was 512 nanometers. And if you remember when we looked at the tubes, the color got darker as we went um, from left to right, from tube number one to tube number seven. And then the tube started getting lighter again, and this is shown in the absorbance data. Tube 1 through 7, it gradually increases, and then the absorbance values start to go down again. Because remember, the darker the solution, the higher the absorbance value. You now have all the data for this experiment. So it is your job to take the data and make a jobs plot. If you have Microsoft Excel, you can go ahead and use that and use the instructions in this lab procedure and in Activity 1 to help you. Or you can continue watching this video to see how to use Google Sheets to make this plot. So I'm going to go through a, how to do a jobs plot using Google Sheets. You can also do it in Microsoft Excel if you have it and you can see the instructions in the Experiment 23 procedure, as well as reference Activity 1, where we did our graphing exercise in Microsoft Excel. I went ahead and opened up Google Sheets, and I have a column in here that I typed in for mole fraction, and I just made up some data, just did a, um, a tenth of a mole fraction up to one mole fraction, just for purposes of this demonstration. And then I have a, um, a, a column for absorbance. And so again, I just made these up. So I just increased the absorbance by a tenth up through this one. So this is the highest absorbance. And then the absorbance starts to go down, right? Because that's what we see in our data. The absorbance goes up, then the absorbance goes down. 
So in Google Sheets, in order to get two lines on our graph, we actually want to go to where the absorbance starts going down, and I'm going to highlight those. So I go up to the maximum one, and then the next um, row down, I'm going to highlight 0 0.5 through 0.2, and I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to go right to the column um, next to it, to the right, and I'm going to paste it. So I'm just gonna change the labels here just so we can see. So this is absorbance up. So the absorbances are going up. And then I put the absorbance going down in another column, okay? But I don't wanna change where the mole fraction is because that's on our X, or yeah, that's on our X axis. So we want that's gonna be our X axis. This is gonna be one line with values on our Y axis. This is gonna be a second line with values on the Y axis. So to graph it, just like before, we're going to highlight it. I'm going to go to this little chart, insert chart. And I do chatter pl scatter plots all the time. So I think it um, automatically picks that one. If it doesn't, you go over here and you're going to pick scatter. Okay, we don't want to connect the dots. Um, and then we have to customize it. So um, let's quickly go ahead and put our chart and axes title. So chart title, I'm going to call this a jobs plot for sample data, right? You're gonna do a jobs plot for your data for experiment 23, so you can think of a name of it, um, what to give the graph, what name to give the graph. And then um, I'm going to go and change the horizontal axis title. So it's in mole fraction. Um, you want to probably be specific, um, mole fraction of what, so um, whatever it is, mole fraction of um, whatever substance that it's the mole fraction of. I'm just going to put X here. And then on the vertical axis title, that is our absorbance. And both of those values are unitless. Absorbance has no units and mole fraction has no units. Okay, so now I want to get my equation. So I'm going to click my blue dots, right? We can see that has our um, positive slope for the absorbance going up. And I want to come over here to my customize and I want to do a trend line. And I want to have the R squared. And then the label I want to do is use equation so we can see the equation. So I made up my data, that's why my R squared is one because I just, I made up the data so it's perfect data. So same thing with the red points. I'm gonna click the red, I'm gonna do trend line. I'm going to show the R squared, and I am going to put use equation over here on the right side. One last thing is I can't, I can see that I can't, I just wanna make sure I know where the lines intersect. So I'm gonna double click on the Y axis because I wanna actually make it so I can see a little bit more um, of, the, of the Y axis. So I double clicked it, so that's the vertical axis, and it has minimum um, value, which I don't need to change, but maximum I'm gonna change to 0 0.65. Right, so then I can see, I don't know, it went all the way to 0.8, but at least I can see the lines are intersecting, right? And I can see right where those lines intersect. So I just wanna see a little bit more of the graph. And so this is what, how you would do um, a jobs plot for your data in experiment 23. And then you wanna make sure you um, print it out and turn it in with your lab report.